Okay. In the last lecture, we have seen how to calculate the value for the capacitor for different types of capacitor, like power plate capacitor, uh, cylindrical coaxial capacitor, and spherical capacitors. Uh, now we are going to study how to calculate the value of arrangement of capacitors. For example, if the capacitors are connected in parallel to each other, what would be the equivalent capacitor? Or if the capacitors are connected in series to each other, what would be the equivalent capacitor? So we will start with capacitors in parallel. When uh, the capacitors are connected in parallel, the potential difference between all the capacitors are the same. Because actually the potential difference here would be the potential difference between terminal A and terminal B, which is the same for all the capacitors in parallel. So we say that when a potential difference V is applied across several capacitors connected in parallel, that potential difference is applied across each capacitor. Now, the potential difference here at capacitor 1 is V, in capacitor 2 is V, in capacitor 3 is V. The charge in capacitor 1 would be Q1, depending on the value of C1, such that Q1 would equal C1 multiplied by V. Similarly, Q2 would be C2 multiplied by V. Q3 would be C3 multiplied by V. So, the total charge Q stored on the capacitor is the sum of the charge stored in all capacitors. So, the total charge would be Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Uh, capacitors connected in parallel can be replaced with an equivalent capacitor that has a total charge Q and the same potential difference. So, if we replace this parallel connection with only one capacitor, such that when the potential is V, the charge Q would be C equivalent multiplied by V, where Q would equal Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. So, in parallel capacitors, and the equivalent have the same potential, Q equal Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, which is actually C1 multiplied by V plus C2 multiplied by V multiplied by plus C3 multiplied by V. So, in this case, the equivalent capacitor, C equivalent, would be Q over V would be C1 plus C2 plus C3. Or in other words, if I have any capacitors in parallel, the equivalent capacitor would be the summation of the value of this capacitor. On the other hand, if I'm talking about capacitors in series, in capacitors in series, the applied voltage will introduce charge Q in the first plate. The charge Q in the first plate will produce negative Q in the second plate of the first capacitor. This negative Q is connected directly to capacitor 2. So it will introduce positive Q in the first plate of capacitor 2, which introduces negative Q in the second plate of capacitor 2. The second plate is connected directly to the first plate of the capacitor 3. So this negative Q will introduce positive Q in the upper plate of capacitor 3 and negative Q in capacitor 3. So, in this case, the value of the charge on all capacitors is the same. Now we say that the potential difference at capacitor 1 multiplied by the value of capacitor 1 would equal Q. So, C1 multiplied by V1 would be Q. C2 multiplied by V2 would be Q. C3 multiplied by V3 would be Q. And the potential V1 plus V2 plus V3 should equal the total potential of the feeding battery. So, in this case, we say that when a potential difference V is applied across several capacitors connected in series, the capacitors 
have identical charge Q, the sum of the potential difference V1, V2, V3 across all the capacitors is equal to the applied potential difference. The battery directly produces charge on only the two blades which are connected. So effectively the battery introduces the charge on the upper blade of the first capacitor and negative charge on the lower blade of the third capacitor. So the battery directly produces charge only on the two blades to which is connected the bottom blade of capacitor 3 and the top blade of capacitor 1. The charges that are produced on the other blades are due to merely to the shifting of a charge already there. So minus Q would introduce positive Q here, positive Q would introduce negative Q due to the direct connection here. And the negative Q would produce positive Q in the, the capacitor, and this positive Q would produce negative Q. Okay? Charges that are produced on other blades are due to merely shifting the charge already there. For example, the part of circuit enclosed by dashed line is electrically isolated from the rest of the circuit. Thus, the charge can only be redistributed. So, if I introduce positive here, it will have negative here with equal value. Because actually, the total charge here should be zero. When a charge is shifted from one capacitor to another, in series capacitor, it can move uh, along only one road, such that from capacitor 3 to capacitor 2, and from capacitor 2 to capacitor, it cannot move from capacitor 3 to capacitor 1. Now, capacitors that are connected in series can be replaced by an equivalent capacitor that has the same charge Q and the same total potential V. So, the equivalent capacitor will have charge Q with the same potential V. Now, we say that V1, the potential at the first capacitor, equals Q over C1 V2 equal Q over C2 V3 equal Q over C3 and effectively V the total potential equal Q over C equivalent and we said that the total potential V equal V1 plus V2 plus V3 so V1 plus V2 plus V3 which is the total voltage is Q multiplied by 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So the equivalent capacitor, C equivalent, would equal Q over V, Q over V. So it would be 1 over 1 over C plus 1 over oh, C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Or in other words, we can say that 1 over C equivalent equal 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. This comes simply from saying that V equal Q over C equivalent. So Q over C equivalent here would be Q multiplied by 1 over C1, 1 over C2, 1 over C3. So 1 over C equivalent would equal 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Uh, in a general case, if we are talking about any capacitors, we can say that the 1 over C equivalent equals the summation of 1 over C for all the capacitors. It can be noted that from this simple relation, the equivalent, uh, the equivalent capacitor, the value of the equivalent capacitor would be smaller than the smallest one of the total capacitor. So, for example, if this capacitor is 1 and this 2 and this 3 picofarad, this 1 picofarad, 2 picofarad, 3 picofarad, so I am expected that the equivalent capacitor is less than 1 picofarad. So it is smaller than the smallest one of the series curve. Also, if we are talking about uh, similar capacitors, for example, if uh, this 6 picofarad, 6 picofarad, 6 picofarad, and they have 3, uh, effectively the equivalent capacitor would be 
the value over 3. So it would be 6 over 3, it would be 2 picofarads. So these are just simple rules to know that uh, the value of uh, the equivalent capacitor, uh, the equivalent capacitor in series uh, of, of series capacitors, uh, the equivalent capacitor is smaller than the smallest one of the capacitors. And if the capacitors are equal, so the equivalent capacitor will equal the value of the capacitor over the over their number. As an example, find the equivalent capacitance for the combination capacitance shown in the figure. Here we have C1 and C2 are in parallel to each other. And the combination from C1 and C2 is in series with C3. So to obtain the capacitance of this configuration, at the beginning we will start with this barrel combination to connect them as one equivalent capacitor, we will call it C12. In parallel capacitors, we just add the values of the capacitors. So the equivalent capacitor for these two barrel capacitors will be the value of the first capacitor, which is 12 microfarad, plus the value of the second capacitor, which is 5.3 microfarad. So the combination here would be 17.3 microfarad. Now, the total capacitance here would be the capacitance C12 in series with the capacitor C3. So to find out the total value of this capacitance, we can see that the equivalent capacitor 1 over C123 would equal the value of the capacitor 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So in this case, 1 over C12, 1 over C3, plus 1 over C3, 1 over 4.5 would be 0.28. By taking the inverse of this value, we can find out C123 or the equivalent capacitor for the total combination between 1 and 2 and 3 would be 3.75 microfarad. This helps we obtain the equivalent capacitor for the system. Now, it is required to find out the potential difference applied to the input terminals. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the potential difference applied to the input terminals is. 12.5, so the total voltage here is 12.5 volts. What is the charge on the capacitor C1? What is the charge in the capacitor C1? To find out the charge on the capacitor C1, we said that before Q equals C multiplied by V. So if I have the potential at C1, I can obtain the charge on C1. So it is required to find out the potential at C1. Here is the potential difference on the total combination of C1, C2, 3, 3 is 12.5 volts. So it is required to find out the potential difference between point A and B, which actually correspond the potential difference on C1 and also in C2. So we need to find out the potential difference VAB. To find out the potential difference VAB, we will start with getting uh, the equivalent circuit for the total capacitor combination here. And we obtain that the total, or the equivalent of the total capacitor combination is 3.57 microfarad. So based on this, we can obtain the charge on the equivalent capacitor. The voltage here is 12.5. So 12.5 multiplied by 3. 
5-7 microfarad would introduce the value of charge Q here. This charge is Q123, which is the total charge for the equivalent combination of the capacitors. Now, this equivalent capacitor effectively is a series combination between C3 and the combination between C1 and C2, C12. We said that in a series combination, the value of the charge in the upper plate would be the value of the charge in the lower plate, the value of the charge in the other plate, and so on. So, the calculated charge from the equivalent capacitor would be the same charge in those two capacitors. In capacitor C separately and in the connected capacitor C12. So, in this case, the combination of C1 and C2 has a total charge 44.6 microcoulomb. But the required is to find out the charge on capacitor 1, not the combination between C and 1. So we will return back. Okay. Now we have the charge on the combination between C1 and C2, which is C12. From this combination, this is the value of the equivalent capacitor C12, and this is the charge. We can obtain the potential difference V12 in this case, which actually is the potential between A and B. So, in this case, the value Q12 over the value of C12 would be the potential difference between 1 and 2, uh, 1, 2, which is the potential difference between the point A and point B. So, in this case, the potential difference V equal Q over C. So V12 would be the charge 44.6 microcoulomb over the equivalent capacitance 17.3 microfarad, which already we have calculated before. So from this, we can obtain the potential difference on the two terminals of the equivalent capacitor C12. This potential difference is effectively the potential difference on C1 and the potential difference at C2. So, this potential is actually applied on C1 and also applied on C2. Now, I have the value of capacitor C1 and the potential on it. So, we can see that Q1 would equal C1 multiplied by V1, so C1 is 12 microfarad, and V1, what we have obtained, 2.58 volts, so by multiplying this value, the charge on the first capacitor would be 31 microfarad. Okay? Another example, I have a capacitor, C1. Uh, C1 is a charge to potential difference 6.3 volts. And uh, then uh, it has been charged by using a battery and the battery is removed. So it is still charged. Okay. Uh, the capacitor C1 is connected to a capacitor C2 which has uh, 8.95 microfarad. So now capacitor 1 is a charge, so it has positive and negative charge, and capacitor 2 is uncharged, and I connect this switch. So some of the charge will flow from C1 to C2. Uh, 
Find out the charge on each capacitor when equilibrium is reached. Equilibrium is reached when, when this charge move from C1 to C2, uh, the potential difference will decrease on C1 and will increase in C2 until the potential at C1 equals the potential at C2, then there is no charge will flow anymore. So, we will start with uh, the total charge in capacitor C1 before connecting switch 1. So, Q0 equal the value of capacitor C0 multiplied by its initial potential V0. So, this is 3.5 microfarad multiplied by its initial volt. 6.3 volt. So this is the total charge in capacitor 1 before connecting switch 1. Now, after connecting switch 1, some of this charge will be transferred to the capacitor C2. So the potential on C1 will be decreased while the potential at C2 will be increased until potential at C1 equal potential at C2 and in this case there is no current flow anymore so at equilibrium V1 equal V2 and effectively if we are talking about or in terms of a charge V1 equal Q1 over C1 and V2 equal Q2 over C2 because actually Q equals C multiplied by V Okay. In addition, the total charge in this system should be the initial total charge of the capacitor C1. Because actually, uh, the source of the charge in my case here is the charge which was in C1. Uh, so, Q1 plus Q2 should equal the initial charge on C1, Q0. Now I have two unknowns, Q1 and Q2, and we have two equations. Uh, Q1 plus Q2 equal Q0, or in other words, Q2 equal Q0 minus Q1, and Q1 over C1 equal Q2 over C2. So we can replace this Q2 by Q0 minus Q1. So now it is an equation of Q1 only. The only unknown here is Q1. Q0 has been calculated. So uh, by replacing the value of C1 by 3.5 microfarad and C2 8.9 farad, we can solve for Q1. We can find Q1 would be 6.35 microfarad. It means that it has been reduced from 22 to 6.35 and Q2 would be the difference Q0 minus Q1 it would be 16 microfarad microcoulomb sorry microcoulomb okay as a few questions we have here a combination of four capacitors each capacitor is 500 microfarad and we have uh, a voltmeter reading 1000 volt between these two points. What is the magnitude of the charge on each capacitor field? So it is required to find out uh, the charge, assuming that it's Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 and effectively they are all the same. In this case, so the value of the charge Q in this case, so what will be? Would be 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 20, 50, or none of these. Let us see. Uh, capacitor C1 and C2 are connected in parallel. The equivalent capacitance is given by the total equivalent capacitance. We said that. 1 over C equivalent equal 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So C equivalent would be C1, C2 over C1 plus C2 or C1 plus C2 over C1, C2 
or uh, 1 over c1 plus c2 or c1 over c2 or c1 plus c2 uh, first of all I'm not solving with you but uh, uh, just a very simple note from uh, the units of the problem the equivalent capacity will be in farad and the original capacity will be in farad so it would be impossible to be 1 over c because this 1 over farad it would be impossible to be c1 over c2 because this is dimensionless okay it would be impossible to be uh, c1 plus c2 over c1 c2 because it is 1 over farad okay so actually b c d it can be omitted just by using units, uh, not by solving the problem. Right. <laughs> so, this now is an A or B or E. Check it. Uh, another question is a 2 microfarad and a 1 microfarad capacitor uh, are connected in series. So, they are connected in series. And the potential difference is applied across the uh, combination. The two microfarad has twice the charge or half the charge of one microfarad, twice the potential, half the potential, none of the above. Uh, let us see. Now, uh, a battery is used to charge series combination of two identical capacitors. So, uh, capacitor 1 is C, capacitor 2 is C, and uh, they are connected in series. The potential difference across the battery terminals is V, and the total charge is Q flowing through the battery during the charging process. Then, the, uh, the charge on the positive plate of each capacitor and the potential difference across each capacitor are, uh, sorry, during this charging process, then the charge on the positive plate and of each capacitor and the potential difference across each capacitor is Q over 2, V over 2, Q, V, Q over 2, V, Q, V over 2, Q, 2, V. So we have the battery V and the total charge Q and two capacitors in series and I'm looking for the charge and the voltage at each capacitor which one was it. It is very easy by George. Now the diagram here shows six six microfarad capacitor six six. Uh, the capacitance between the point A and B is so these are three capacitors. Each one is six microfarad in series, these three capacitors in series, each one is six microfarad. Then this branch is parallel to this branch, so the combination would be which of this one. Also, it is very simple. Okay, see you in the next lecture.